after completion of the plain sedimentation process the next step is called as sedimentation aided with coagulation so that is the next topic to us sedimentation aided with coagulation now this process is used to remove this is this process is used to remove colloidal substances or colloidal impurities okay so what are colloids here so we will write few points colloids are charged particles colloids are charged particles their surface is charged while traveling in the water their surface is charged while traveling in water so most of these colloids they have negative charges so most of colloids have negative charges and we know that a negatively charged ion attracts the positively charged ions okay so the negatively charged ions attract the positively charged ions present in water so negatively charged ions attract the positively charged positively charged ions in water ions in water so due to this attraction there is a force of attraction we can say between this negatively and positively charged due to this attractive force there is a layer of positive charge which is surrounding the layers of collides so to understand it what i am doing is i am just drawing it here so this is the main collide so this collide is having the negative charges so on this negative charge on this negative charge there is a layer of positively charged ions which is produced so there is one more layer above this collide so a layer of a layer of positively positive ions we can say positive ions is surrounding is surrounding the collides this is this layer is called as stern layer this layer is called as stern s t e r n so this stern layer or this stern layer attracts it attracts more positive and negative ions and forms and forms another layer called as diffuse layer diffuse layer okay so the stern is present inside now after this stern also there is again there is again some addition of positive and negative ions above this so due to this stern layer this attracts certain positive and negative ions and there is one another layer which is prepared above this layer and this is called as a diffuse layer so this is diffuse layer this blue one is called as stern and this red one is our main collides okay and this two layers that you are seeing above the collides this is called as electronic double layer 
okay electronic double layer now this electronic double layer which you are seeing surrounding the collides it gives a stability to colloidal surface and this stability is measured in terms of strength of colloidal particle so this electronic double layer electronic double layer surrounding the colloidal surface surrounding the colloidal surface gives stability gives a stability to the colloidal particles to the colloidal particles this stability is measured this stability is measured is measured in terms of in terms of strength of colloidal particles strength of colloidal particles okay the measurement is done measurement is done using using or we can say in terms of measurement is done in terms of zeta potential so this term you have to remember zeta potential okay so this zeta potential gives us the strength of gives us the strength of the colloidal particles now there is certain formulas for calculation of this zeta potential but we don't need to go in that detail right now regarding zeta potential but we should only know that the zeta potential is the measure measure of stability of particle okay that means if the zeta potential is higher that means more stable is the particle if the zeta potential is higher if the zeta potential is higher more stable is the particle if it is less then it is less stable now we have a we need we need certain chemical we need certain chemical which can penetrate the layer of this ions and make destabilization to occur that means we have to aim for destabilization then only we can remove this colloidal substance or the colloidal impurity now so we have to add certain chemicals so addition of chemicals addition of certain chemical certain chemical to destabilize to destabilize the colloidal particles to destabilize the colloidal particles is called as is called as coagulation is called as coagulation okay and the chemical substances which are used in coagulation and the chemical substance or the chemical used in coagulation coagulation is called coagulant so this is coagulation and coagulant okay now once again we'll see what we have discussed a colloidal particle which when it is traveling in water it is mostly it is having a negative charge then the negative charge attracts the positive charge and prepares a stern layer 
This stern layer further attracts the positive and negative ions during its travel in water and forms a diffuse layer. So you can see now it is having certain protection of the layers. Now the strength of this layer we express it in terms of a zeta potential. If the zeta potential is more that means the strength is more. The strength of the layers is more the particle is more stable. So to destabilize that layers we have to add certain chemicals. That addition of certain chemicals to destabilize the colloidal particle is called as <coughs> is called as coagul coagulation and the chemical that is used is called coagulants. Okay. Now, so what are the mechanisms that takes place during this coagulation process? So these are asked many times. Mechanisms of destabilization. So the first step that happens is the compression of electronic double layer. So compression of electronic double layer. Electronic double layer. So we have seen the electronic double layer here. The first step after chemicals is added. What happens? There is a compression in this electronic double layer. Now second one is adsorption and charge neutralization so after the compression has been taken place the second step is to adsorb all these charges and neutralize these charges so the charges are neutralized in the second step in the mechanism then the third one is entrapment Entrapment in precipitation. Entrapment in precipitation. This is also called as sweep coagulation. That means now all the particles, all the particles are trying to get swept to a certain place by entrapment due to precipitation. So in the first step what is happen the compression of electronic layer has happened in the second step there is the charge neutralization step in the third step there is formation of precipitation and in the last stage is interparticle interparticle bridging now what is the meaning of this let's say the particle or precipitates that are formed in the third third mechanism so these are the particles now due to this sweep coagulation what is happening what is the meaning of sweep coagulation that it is getting swept at or it is getting swept nearer to each other so these particles now they form a bridge so these small particles they connect each other and they form a bigger particle now you can see the smaller particle is combined we can say interparticle bridging has happened and it is formed into a bigger particle this bigger particle now this will have a more weight so this will settle with the help of sedimentation and this is the overall mechanism of coagulation aided with sedimentation so for removal of colloidal substance we cannot directly do the sedimentation because the size of the particles are very less also the particles colloidal particles have charges on them so we will add one chemical to destabilize the collides then after adding that chemical, that chemical only has certain property of interparticle bridging. So the particles will create a suspension and those will settle easily in the sedimentation tank. So this is the overall mechanisms of destabilization. Now we will only name few coagulants and that we will see in the next video. So the coagulants which are used commonly, so common coagulants are aluminium sulphate, this is called as alum, very important, the next is ferrous sulphate. 
ferrous sulfate then ferric chloride and the last one is sodium aluminate so these are the four coagulants which are commonly used this we are going to see in subsequent videos so one thing we are going to write it so about coagulants so coagulants are trivalent trivalent aqua metallic trivalent aqua metallic cationic substances having high coagulant power okay so these substances are trivalent aqua metallic cationic substances and they are having high coagulating power now we know what is coagulation as we already seen now from the next video we will discuss this aluminium ferrous ferric and sodium aluminate respectively